All right. Uh, but stop trickling in, so we'll just get started. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for logging on and attending this morning's program. My name is Matt Schumann. I am on the programming team here at Cary Library. Uh, before we begin, just a few notes. Please let me know in the chat if there are any technical issues that you're having. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, send those to the Q&A and I can, uh, using the Q&A button, and I can filter them to uh, Trisha. Um, this program is also made possible by the generous donors to the Cary Library Foundation. Uh, I'd like to now introduce Trisha perez Keneally. She is the owner of the Inn at Hastings Park, uh, which I believe she is recording from today. Um, she has been a major part of our cooking series all of last year. Uh, and uh, she also has her own cooking videos on the Inn's Instagram page. Um, uh, we appreciate her diverse culinary knowledge and eagerness to teach us how to cook delicious dishes at home. So now please welcome Trisha. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, welcome to the Edith Park. Where I'm standing right now is actually the living room to be in, but I'm actually using it as my cooking studio. Today's a really special day. I'm going to be spending the beginning of the day with all of you. And then I'm transitioning right into our first commercial culinary weekend at the end. So we have a new offering where once a month we're doing a whole weekend where people can come and stay at the end and cook with us. It's actually over 20 hours of culinary instruction and it includes an agrarian farm tour, a beautiful tasting menu from our executive chef, Michael Arnold. So if you're interested in having a staycation with a purpose, please, Check us out on the website. There's different themes every month. This, this month's theme is a Scott space theme. And if you feel so moved, we actually have two more spaces. So if you feel so moved and you'd like to check in at noon today, it's just, just call the front desk and I'll be more than happy to help you. So, uh, Trisha, before you begin, um, sorry to interrupt, is it possible to just move the camera slightly closer or um, just for, uh, the audio was a little um, off? All right, so what I was talking about is I'm going to be teaching all weekend here at the Inn. We have guests that will be staying with us for the weekend, um, and they will be having a whole variety of cooking classes, everything from the basics of stocks all the way to lunch, brunch, dessert, high tea, cheese plates, all of it. It's kind of my cooking boot camp, um, if you may. So today we're talking about this is the beginning of the 2021 series of Back to Basics Cooking. And today we're talking about soups. Um, hopefully some of you received um, the packet that I put together. And we're gonna do that this year. We're going to send out a list of directions, ingredients, equipment, in case you wanna cook along with me. And I'll give you some directions about things that you should have done ahead of time if you wanna kind of keep along with, with me as I go. Um, so today we're making three different types of soup. We're making matzo ball soup. We are making a farmhouse chili. And then we are also making a roasted tomato soup. In the packet, I included directions for how to make chicken stock and beef stock. If you go back in the archives of the libraries, uh, the classes that I've done for the library, you will see um, you will see directions for how to do that. So what I've done right now is I am actually I've chopped up the vegetables. These are going to be the vegetables that I'm going to serve in our matzo ball soup. When I make my chicken stock, I like to cook the stock for three hours. So those vegetables aren't necessarily the most flavorful to serve in the soup. So what I do is I finely dice celery carrots, sometimes I do leek, sometimes I do onion, and then I sweat them in a little bit of olive oil uh, and also with a little bit of salt. So we're extracting a little bit of that liquid and they, they're, we're making them a little bit softer. So they're a little bit more pleasant to the bite when we put it in our soup. So before we got ready today, there were a few things that I got ready. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over here I'm actually going to have my assistant who my, my production assistant today is my daughter, Gabriella. She's going to share the screen a second so that you can get an idea of some of the things that I did beforehand. 
So I am demonstrating the vegetable stock here. And what I did was I cut up carrots, celery, onion, and mushroom so that they were in even sized pieces. And Gabrielle is gonna pull up a picture of that pot. The first picture is just all of the vegetables. And then the second picture, what you see, what you'll see on top. Are you there, Chief? No, something's up with your desk. Here we go. So um, what I did was I also demonstrated how to make a bouquet garni. So a bouquet garni is a very, um, it's used to flavor, flavor the stocks. And what it is, it's sprigs of thyme, parsley, bay leaf. And what I do is I actually make a bundle. I take a celery stalk. So I'll take the celery stalk, I'll cut it in half, and then I use the celery, I put it together, and I put the parsley, the sprigs of thyme, and the bay leaf. I tie it all together. The reason I do this is that it makes it very easy when, I've done, when I'm done cooking my stock to just, just grab the bouquet garnini out of the stock. So I apologize for having a little bit of trouble pulling up the PowerPoint um, to show you the picture. So I will send that along to the group afterwards. So if we come over here, um, what I have boiling um, on this induction burner is actually the veggie stuff. And what you can see, I'm actually gonna take the light so you can see it. You can see that there's this beautiful color. That beautiful color is coming because I actually left the onion peel in, in the stock. There's carrots, you can see the mushroom. The mushroom adds a little bit more of that beefy taste that you have in the stock, if that's something that you want, but you prefer not to eat meat. So the other thing too, is that this has been cooking for about an hour. I'm gonna turn that off and we're gonna use this stock as our base for a lot of the things that we're doing today. We're gonna move over here to my oven. And in the oven, what I have is I have tomatoes. These were Roma tomatoes that I sliced in half. I drizzled with olive oil, seasoned with a little bit of salt, and I also included some garlic cloves. And we're going to be using these for two of the recipes, the tomato soup recipe that we're going to be making and the farmhouse chili recipe that we're going to be making. There was a uh, question that came in about the stock. Yes. Um, would you uh, speak to the pros and cons of purchase stock versus homemade stock and if there's a favorite brand even that you have? So I am partial to using homemade stock. I actually think it's a very easy skill to master. I think the challenge is that most people have never been taught how to do it. So if you haven't watched the my classes on doing that, I would highly encourage you to do it because I think that you'll find that it's super easy. The vegetable stock that I just did, I started that at I started at an hour and 15 minutes before we started the class. So if you have time on a weekend, you can make a veggie stock, you can make a beef stock, you can make a chicken stock, and then you can store it in either plastic port containers like these, or even in Ziploc bags so that you have them ready to use. There's some, there are some really good store brands like Home Basics, some of the brands that they have at Wilson Farm are really good. There's some other ones. I would highly encourage you to use the lower sodium versions because a lot of them have a lot of sodium to enhance the flavor. But I really would encourage you to try this on your own. The other thing is, is that I do not like wasting food. When you work in a kitchen, especially if you've been trained in the French technique, it is all about using everything. So another way that you can make veggie stuff is if you, so I always have like a container that has all of my, my scraps. These are, these are carrot peels. This is celery stock, like celery top. I could keep the, um, the root of the onion. If while you're cooking, you keep a bag, like a, a bowl or a bag, you just can keep adding to it. And when you fill up a gallon bag and you, and you can freeze it, then you're ready to make some veggie stuff. Um, it's a little bit harder to use some of those scraps, although sometimes we do in the, when we make chicken stock or beef stock, because the cooking time on those is much longer, so they will break down. So I would save these scraps to do more of your vegetable stuff. I also say we make whole roasted chickens a lot in our house. 
I also save the carcasses from making those chickens to make stock as well. So making stock is really one of the oldest recipes that, that we have. Like it, it is such an important part of the culinary tradition. And it really is rooted in making sure that we extract every ounce of flavor from every piece of food that we have. So I hope that that answered your questions about stock. Obviously I'm biased towards the home cooked product, but obviously if, if it's the difference between you trying a recipe and not, then of course buy the best quality store-bought stock. So the next thing that we're gonna to turn to is I am going to start our farmhouse chili. And I'm gonna do it in a little bit of a smaller batch um, than what you had um, on your, uh, than what you had in the recipe. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to start to cook. I have some um, loose sausage and I'm going to start to cook that, to brown that with onion. Now, this is a recipe that I use, I've used a lot over the years. Um, I, I think as some of you have watched my classes before know that we like to tailgate a lot. And this is a recipe that for many years I would make and it would stay you know, nice and warm and I would bring it down to Gillette. Actually, one of my favorite stories is Actually, it's getting to be, oh, it'll be 17, it'll, ah, it was 17 years ago this month. I was eight months pregnant, and my husband and I were going to watch the Patriots play against the Titans. It was ridiculously cold. It was about 10 or 12 degrees, maybe below zero. And we were really excited to go to the game because one of our friends, his first cousin, was playing in the game. It was so, it was predicted to be so cold. My father in law said to Mike, Are you sure you can't convince her not to go to the game? And Mike sort of said, You know, my wife, we're, we're going. So we went. It was so cold that someone dropped, it wasn't on purpose, a beer slipped and it hit the ground and it froze on top. So after the game, um, our friend's cousin, his name is Tom Ashworth, he was an offensive lineman for the team. Uh, his wife wasn't able to come to the game because she was also pregnant and he was starving. So we had some of this chili left over. So I gave him my farmhouse chili to take home to eat after he won that divisional game and they also did go on. So it was a really fun experience. So this, this particular recipe uh, brings back so many memories for me. And I think that that's also the way it works with a lot of cooking. So many of the recipes that I do are things that bring back memories of things that I've done with family. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to let that brown. This is going to take about 10 minutes. And while that's happening, I'm actually going to take some of this veggie stock and put it into another pan so I can get ready to make our matzo balls. Because the matzo balls are going to take about 30 minutes. Uh, there was a question about um, chicken stock. If you save and freeze chicken carcasses for stock. Yes, I do. I, I totally save the carcasses. And that's why too, I try to encourage people that if you're going to, um, it is much more cost effective to buy whole chickens. Um, it's just, it's cheaper because they don't have the labor um and i have done a demo and i actually i think we posted another one on the ins website on how to break down a chicken so you can you know if you're a family of two or if you live on your own you might think that it's foolish to buy a whole chicken but there's things that you can do to kind of use it uh and then there, there's a question too where do you buy uh sausage and um if you have good sources that you could recommend yeah, so I buy sausage in several places. I actually have to say, um, so I get sausage from Pete and Jen, uh, from Coven Farm, Pete and Jen at Coven Farm. They raise their own pigs and we actually buy, it's kind of ironic for me to be talking about sausage and we're talking about making possible. Um, but we buy a whole pig 
And so we get an assortment of breakfast sausage and Italian sausage. And some of it is loose. So it makes it really easy to make recipes like this. I also think that we're really lucky because of the large Italian community here. There are some very good quality sausage that are made in the area. So um, it's really cheap. I think it's, it's made in that bird. Um, and they sell it, uh, they sell it at Wilson's, they sell it at a lot of the supermarkets. Um, but I think it's a really high quality sausage. They make Italian sausage, both hot and sweet. And they also make tiny sausage, which is very, um, I kind of compare it to, um, it's like a tiny sparrow without the bone. Now, when you do this recipe, I it all depends on my mood. I had loose sausage today, so that's what I use to do it. But if you wanted to, you could use the sausage that's paste. Um. Eat pork. Um, there's also some great turkey and chicken products. The one thing you need to be very careful of if you are buying cased sausages, even though, like for example, the Alfresco brand is a you know apple. They make all these chicken sausage. They are all cased in pork. So you need to really make sure if you're buying if you're looking for something that is not a pork product, you need to really make sure that um, that it's not cased in pork. So what I'm doing on the other side here is I'm going to bring. Um, I'm going to bring this bevy stock to a boil. Um, and what I've done before, before we started, because I wanted this to chill for half an hour, is I made our matzo ball mix. There are many matzo ball variations um, based on, on family preference. We like our matzo balls to be light and fluffy. So what I learned from my grandmother was I use seltzer and I use chicken fat or schmaltz. You can use water, you can use olive oil. Some people use margarine. I know that that sounds funny, but for people who observe, uh, who are kosher, margarine was a product that was used a lot. Um, so what I do is this is four eggs. It's a cup of matzo meal, a quarter cup of seltzer, a quarter cup of the rendered chicken fat. So what I do is I melt it. I melt the chicken fat and you can buy it empire Chef sells in their frozen kosher food section. They do sell chicken fat around the Jewish holidays. Wilson Farm also carries it and sells it um, as well. The important thing is, is that you, you need to figure out the matzo ball recipe that works for you. I mixed all of that together and I let it chill for about half an hour so that it has sort of a, a stiffer consistency. I like to use um, an ice cream scoop to, to shape mine. These are not gonna be as precisely shaped, but that's okay. I'm gonna just drop it in like that. Now, um, when I celebrate, you know, really lucky to have a great Jewish community here. So for both Rosh Hashanah and Passover, we celebrate my family. We have one group that we celebrate Rosh Hashanah with, and it's about 40 people and another people that another group that we celebrate Passover with. So I usually make when I make matzo balls, I usually make about 90 at a time. The recipe that's on the most of the boxes or the recipe that I just say will make about 10 to 12 decent sized matzo balls. And so if you're doubling, it's actually, it's a very easy recipe to double. Um, and I also think my, my family loves matzo balls. So I don't think that it's something that needs to be relegated to the Jewish holidays. The other thing is that all of these broths, the vegetable broth, the bean, the chicken broth, they actually really are good for you. There is research that has been done about um, you know, they call it Jewish penicillin, that there is restorative property to these. And there's a lot of history about consomme and things like and bullion and things like that being used to help people who are recovering from surgery or illness. Um, this was something that was fed a lot to people who were coming back from war, who were suffering from war injuries. So there is a strong 
culinary history and tradition of making broth based soups because they were restorative. And especially at this time when we really are trying to make sure that we're all doing our part to stay healthy, soups should be a really integral part of your diet right now. So I'm gonna turn back to my farmhouse chili. Um, I'm going to add some celery and in that celery, I've also added some cumin uh, and a little bit of, I'm also putting in a little bit of fresh sage. And I'm going to let that cook for a few minutes. The sage smells wonderful. I'm gonna let the celery soften up for a few minutes. And while that's happening, I'm gonna go grab those roasted tomatoes because we're gonna use them for two purposes. So we're gonna come over to the oven and I'm gonna divide up these roasted tomatoes. As I said, I really don't like to waste food. We had some tomatoes that I was gonna use for a different purpose and I didn't get around to doing it. So what I decided to do was I'm going to use some of the, some of these tomatoes to make um, a really easy roasted tomato soup, but then I'm going to use the rest of them in our, uh, to make, uh, to add to our, um, to add to our farmhouse chili. So I am a big fan I, of the, my Vitamix blender. It is very important when you are blending hot liquids, if you're pureeing a soup or doing anything like that, it is extremely important that you only, that you fill it below the halfway mark. Because filling it anywhere above that, it becomes, it can actually be really dangerous because it can explode um, when you start to blend it. So what I'm doing is I am putting the top on my blender. So the beautiful thing about the Vitamix is that it actually does have a soup function. So if you were to press the soup function and leave it on, I'm not going to do that now because it's, it's like two or three minutes. It actually keeps the liquid warm. So I sometimes do the same thing with broccoli. I'll roast the broccoli and then I'll blend it and I'll add a little bit of vegetable stock to make a really quick broccoli soup that I could top with cheese, put a little sour cream. Um, it's just a really quick way to make a soup. So I'm just gonna go ahead and really quickly um, start my blender. And as I there said, was... this is very simple. This is roasted tomatoes, olive oil, and garlic. Now, there is a a question about um, uh, how many uh, servings the chili ends up being. Um, the recipe for the chili ends up being between six and eight servings, depending on how generous your portion. Thank so you. So I'm just going to pour this out into the bowl so you can see, like, this is tomato soup goodness. Like, this is just pure tomatoes. This is a wonderful thing to serve with, like, um, with a grilled cheese sandwich and it is really quick so some of the things that you can do i'm going to use these to serve some of the other things too i'm going to give it a little bit of a mexican hint by putting some tortilla chips in it and i'm also going to use a little bit of um this is lapna right so it's you know kind of in the greek yogurt family but it is very similar to crema so uh, when I was growing up, my mom used to milk, I, I think, I don't know if she got it from my grandmother, but she used to mix milk or cream with our tomato soup. So I sometimes like to have a hint of dairy and I just mix it up. If you wanted to add, you know, you could rip up kale, you could add a little meatballs. It's actually extremely versatile. So I'm going to come back. My, my matzo balls are here and they are you can see that they're floating. I'm actually going to cover them up and I'm going to let them cook for another 30 minutes and I'm going to return to the recipe at hand here. As I said, normally I would, I have these tomatoes, so I'm going to add these tomatoes 
um, instead of adding tomato, tomato juice, as it calls in the recipe. I'm also going to add in Um, I have a little bit of maple syrup here. And it adds a really nice, um, it's a very mild, mellow sweetness that it adds. And then I'm going to only add about half of what the recipe calls for in terms of the beans, because I'm kind of halving this recipe. So the thing about this recipe is that there's obviously, a, there's a few variations on it, right? You can do it with tomato sauce, uh, tomatoes, um, tomatoes, tomato juice rather. You could do it with broth. You, um, some people don't like the whole tomatoes like I do, so they may not put them in. What I'm gonna do is, as I said, is I have these leftover tomatoes and I'm gonna add those to my recipe. Um, enjoy that whole tomato taste. So I'm just putting them in whole, but as I stir this, they will begin to dissolve. There was a question about uh, the tomatoes preparation, if there was any salts, pepper, or herbs added um, in yes, advance. I, yep, I did. I actually, um, the preparation for it was, I seasoned them with salt, pepper, a little bit of drizzled olive oil over them and put in those cloves of garlic. We're going to let that cook for another 10 minutes or so. Now, as I said, the beautiful thing about this is I actually got an inquiry for somebody, um, a press inquiry about meals for the week, like things that you could do. This is a great recipe that could hold up for a few days. So especially now when I know a lot of families, um, kids are staying at home, you know, mom, dad, everyone's at home and eating three meals a day. This is a great recipe that you could just cook off and have waiting for people to enjoy um, at any time. What we like to do when we eat the chili is we actually, what I do is I serve it, you know, I had the sour cream, I had the tortilla chips. We sometimes, if we really feel like splurging, we'll serve it actually with Fritos a little bit of a treat, but we'll have, I'll put out like a tortilla chip or a corn chip along with some sour cream, some shredded cheese, maybe some diced scallions so that people could fix it themselves and add whatever they want to make the chili. Now you can play with this and make it thicker or thicker or make the broth a little bit thinner. You would add more tomato juice. You would add more broth if you wanted it to be thinner. If you wanted it to be thicker, and if it was thicker, it would actually be really good also on a baked potato, or you could serve it with rice. You would just minimize the, you know, you would, you would, re you would reduce the amount of liquid. I used canned beans. Um, I am a big fan of Goya. Um, I grew up in Puerto Rico, so this is a staple, and it's now widely available across the United States. Um, they have an organic line of beans. They have a low salt line of beans. Um, and this is one place, um, you know, you could use dry beans, but for me, this was just easier. I think it's easier to just use the canned version for something like this. There are a couple of questions if I can interrupt. Um, one was, what was the consistency of the roasted tomatoes after you had put them in the blender? Were they chunky or liquidy? Here, let me show you. Let's go to the soup. I'm going to use this white spoon again. Um, actually, hold on one second. I'm going to get it from there. Probably kind of a, a better way to see it. So there's that white spoon, and it's it's coarse, it's chunky because you want to be able to see that it was, you know, that it was actually a tomato. If you want it smoother, I didn't. I didn't blend this as much because I know that my kids are going to eat this and this is kind of the way that we like it, but you can make it smoother if you would like. You also need to play with different types of tomatoes because different types of tomatoes have um, different levels of like different water content. These are more watery tomatoes. Plum tomatoes tend to have, um, tend to be less liquidy. So, you know, this is the other thing too, is that it's not, um, 
I always tell people, I wouldn't be a fan of having a mozzarella, like a caprese salad at this time of year, because I wouldn't necessarily eat the tomatoes raw. Although now we have access to beautiful hothouse tomatoes or hydroponic tomatoes that are grown throughout the year. But the beautiful thing is that when you oven roast the tomato, it intensifies the flavor and bring it out. So I actually think that this is a very good use of tomatoes at this time of year, if you feel like having a tomato soup. Um, and then there was a question about why you chose chicken sausage over beef for the chili. Um, actually, I actually used pork. I used pork sausage today. But what I what the point that I made is that I'm actually teaching a similar. I'm te in this afternoon when we have our guests checking in to do our immersive cooking weekend. I am doing a similar soup class, and the guests that are coming do not eat pork. So what I was saying is that you could make it with chicken or turkey sausage, but you have to be very cautious and make sure that you know what the casing is made of because a lot of casings for even turkey and chicken sausage are made out of pork. Thank you for repeating that. And then there was one last question before you move on if you want. Do you ever use a slow cooker for soups? I do not use the slow cooker a lot. Um, I think that maybe part of it is that because I really, the slow cookers are great. Um, you know, if you, it's a really great way to get, make sure that you have a meal ready for your family. But I think that because I'm really lucky to have been able to practice these skills over and over again, I kind of have my routine of how I cook for my family. And that just hasn't been part of my repertoire. But I know there's some people that absolutely swear by their Instapots and their slow cookers. Um, but that's sort of my perspective. Thank you. That was all the questions for now. <laughs> Great. All right, so I'm going to go back and visit my matzo balls. Um, that's probably cooking a little more vigorously than I wanted to, because as you can see, it's causing the, the matzo ball to, to fall apart a little bit. Um, going back to our chili in terms of serving it with the beans. Um, if you were using a dried bean, you do want to make sure that you start the day before because you want to soak them and then you want to be able, um, you want to be able to make sure that they're the right tenderness. Um, I'm going to go ahead and serve out this beautiful farmhouse chili. Gabriella, do you want chips and cream on it? So if I wanted it to be, see, I have all that broth. Um, so I would have, as I said, added a little bit more tomato soup to make that the case if I wanted to. I'm going to take the tortilla chips and I'm going to crumble them on the top. And then I'm going to put a little dollop of the cream. Great. And then I'm going to come back to our, so we have our tomato soup. The presentation looks a little bit similar, that, that's okay. Our tomato soup, then I have our beautiful farmhouse chili, and then I'm going to come over here to grab some of our vegetables, and you can see they're nice and okay. Uh, there was a question. Did you have a, was there a specific size scoop that you used for the um, matzo balls? All depends on what the, what I'm, what I'm using them, like how I'm using them. So for example, if I'm making matzo balls for a big crowd, I'm going to want them to be on the bigger side. So I'll use like a cup measure. The one I used today was, you know, really, um, you know, as you can see, you might remember from when I put them in, they've expanded. So when um, I think a half cup size, a half cup scoop is a good one to use. 
Um, but it all depends um, on how you want to serve it. Some people like this presentation, which is one large matzo ball. Um, so it really depends on how you want to present it. But I think that anywhere between a half a cup and a cup scoop, like a cup scoop of matzo balls, like that will be, that would be a huge matzo ball. So more between the quarter to the half would be a good one. So then, uh, what was the name of the cream again? If you could repeat that. Sorry, I'm having you repeat a lot of things. So what I was using today is Lebna. Um, this is the Middle East, it's Middle Eastern and it's kind of, it's very, it's like a cross between Greek yogurt and sour cream. So we use it, um, we use it a lot. Like we actually use this in our yogurt parfait here at the end. It's really good as in baking products. It has a really nice tang to it. It's a really beautiful product. The other thing too, is that because it's um, kefir, um, kefir is actually a cultured milk and it has really good probiotic qualities. So it's actually another really good thing to incorporate in your cooking as you're trying to boost your immune system at this time of year. So here we have our three, our three soups. We have our matzo ball soup, which today I'm serving, instead of with a chicken stock, I did it with a vegetable broth. I have our roasted tomato soup with tortilla chips, but of course you could, as I said, you could mix it with a little bit of cream. You can thin it out with vegetable or chicken stock. You could shred kale and run it through. You could add tortellini um, to make it a heartier meal. It really is a versatile base. And then the final is our farmhouse chili that has the pork sausage, that sage, the sage and cumin flavoring, a little bit of maple syrup to add, just a touch of sweetness um, and those whole tomatoes. And in the recipe that I gave you, there are variations for using the tomato juice. This is one area. Feel free to use the whole canned tomatoes. They're great. That's a good product if you'd like to use that to enhance your soup. So that was our class on soups today. So if there are any other questions at this time, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, where do you end up uh, purchasing Labna? If you could repeat that, if you had already said it. So you can buy the Labna. I mean, we are Labna. We work with a fabulous family, the Shirazi family. Um, they're in the dairy business, and that's who brings our Labna. Um, but there's actually some really great places. Um, some of the, um, like the Lemajan Bakery, some of the Middle Eastern bakeries, that's probably more where you would find the Labna. The really interesting thing is what I found is that um, I'm actually a big fan of shopping at Market Basket, and I find them to be incredibly receptive. If there's a product that you want and you ask them, they often will bring it in and they will see if the product will work. So I haven't checked to see if they have Lovna um, recently in this Market Basket, but I would imagine I would imagine that if there's a Market Basket near Watertown or in Waltham, I found even that the inventory between the Waltham Market Basket and the Burlington Market Basket is a little bit different. It's reflective of the cultural communities, the different cultural backgrounds that are in the area. So the Lemajon Bakery, um, there's also Sophia's um, in Belmont. They also carry Lebna. Um, they also have a really good Greek yogurt product. So those are some of the places that I would look for it. If there are any more questions, feel free to type them in the Q&A. So just while we're, if there, while we're waiting for additional questions, I just wanted to let people know about some of the things that are going on at the inn. Um, we have beautiful igloos outside each of the igloos. We have four igloos. They each can accommodate six people. So it's a way to still continue um, to support local restaurants by being sort of quasi outside inside. Um, there's individual heaters in each of them. And we're featuring our lunch menu. We have a special tasting menu at night for dinner. And on weekends, we're also offering our champagne brunch in the igloos. Our champagne brunch is fantastic. Um, it's, um, we kind of, the whole idea is that we bring the buffet to you. We start off with pastries and fruit, um, beautiful shellfish, um, and a cheese and charcuterie plate. And then you have your choice of appetizer and entree. And then there's a beautiful selection of homemade desserts to, um, to round it off. We're offering brunch both on our front porch. Um, we're encouraging people to eat it outside as long as they can. We are, of course, adhering to all of the guidelines that have been set by the state. So we're operating at 25% capacity inside of our restaurant. So it's very spacious. And of course, we have the igloos. 
We are open to guests. If you're traveling from out of state or have friends that are traveling from out of state, we do require that you present um, a COVID negative, a negative COVID test result. Um, but of course, if you live locally, we would love to have you. And we are delighted by the number of people, not only from Lexington, but the surrounding community for coming and staying with us, staying with us to get a little break from the monotony and having a vacation. In February, um, my topic, I believe, is chocolate um, in honor of St. Valentine, of Valentine's Day. Um, but we also will be continuing to offer our holiday teas. There will be a, there will be a Valentine's Day tea at the end. And please, if you are not comfortable going out and eating at a restaurant, we have a wonderful takeout menu, and we're able to do touchless delivery to your car. Um, so you don't have to interact. If you don't feel comfortable interacting with other people, we can put it right in your trunk and send you on your way so that you can enjoy a beautiful meal prepared by our team here at the end. Are there any other questions? Uh, there was just one more. I think you just clarified it, but I'm not sure. I'll just read it anyways. Uh, someone's wife gave them a gift certificate for the champagne brunch. Mm -hmm. They asked, should they make a reservation if they plan to pick up the food and take it home? Yes, you. It, um, it is a great idea at this time for any of the restaurants that you support. It actually makes it a lot easier for us from a planning perspective if people make a reservation or order ahead. In terms of the to-go menu, we are completely happy if you want to take food to go and you want to order it on Thursday and pick it up on Friday at a certain time, we are happy to do that. And actually in the coming month, um, Hopefully in about four weeks, four weeks time, we're going to be enhancing our web our web page so that you could order takeout directly from the menu. Oh, uh, of the gift certificate, gift certificates aren't necessarily for a particular thing. You could use them for anything. You can use if you buy a gift certificate from us, you can use it for dinner. You can use it for an overnight stay. You can really use it um, as you choose. Well, if there are no uh, further questions, thank you so much, Tricia, and thank you everyone for attending. This will be, this was recorded and will be put on our YouTube page and uh, be sure to check your email for the recipes as I, I sent it out beforehand. Uh, if you have any issues, you can send uh, an email to carryprograms at minlib.net. Um, I can put that in the chat and then uh, I think that's it. Uh, thank you so much, Tricia. Fabulous. All right. Thank you so much. It was so good to spend this morning with all of you. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at tpkneely at park. And of course, if you try the recipes and you make them, please, please, please take a picture, post it. You can um, include me in your Instagram, like mention, reference me on Instagram. I'm at Tricia Perez Keneally, or you can also mention the Inner Hastings Park as well. We would really appreciate that. Thank you so much and have a wonderful time cooking. Oh, I'm just putting that in the uh, chat, your email. Sorry, I mistyped it, of course. Uh, in at hastingspark.com. Great. And Great. if you want to also include the, um, the Instagram, I, I'm at, at Trisha Perez Keneally. Um, I certainly would appreciate anyone and everyone following. I post videos there all every week. I'm posting different cooking videos and information about what's going on um, food-wise and at the end. Thank you so much. And that I just put that in, so I'll leave it up for a second. Um, Trisha, did you want to stay after? Or are you just a chat real quick, or are you busy? You got to go. More than happy to stay, Matt. Thanks. OK. Thank you, everyone, for coming. You can stay.